My name is Bernard Arrocha, MD, and, and I am a, a hair restoration surgeon, a diplomate of the American Board of uh, Hair Restoration Surgery. My presentation today is about the uh, artistic uh, hairline design and um, the function of the uh, hairline is to frame the face. It uh, connotes gender. You know, there's a male hairline and female hairline. It, it is very important in uh, self-expression. It is through our hair that we uh, maximize our styling options. It, it conveys a frame of mind, sex appeal, and the individual flair. Uh, it facilitates uh, eye contact by framing the face and focusing the attention on the eyes, the most important salient feature of the face. This uh, slide is a picture conducted entirely with hair clippings of the subject. I uh, like this uh, slide because it shows the direction and, and angle of, of uh, exit of the, of the hair follicles. Slide three is me in my mind's eye. You know, it's very important to get inside our patient's uh, head uh, to see what they would want to accomplish and to be sure that we're on the same page. Unfortunately, hair loss is, is a chronically progressive condition and most patients with advanced uh, stage uh, male pattern baldness have greater amount of hair loss than they have donor hair available. So we're always, you know, um, fighting a, a tough battle uh, in that we'll be only able to, to have at our disposal a very small amount of uh, paint or total number of uh, follicles that we can move to create the drawing and painting that's our hair restoration procedure and is responsible for the patient's outcome. So it's very important to gauge where the patient is at and what they would want to accomplish and be sure that we're on the same page because if we're not, we may never be able to make our patient happy. The final point is that we want to be sure that we can deliver the, what the patient envisions as their final outcome and, and that that is totally realistic. Is this natural or transplant? Is this transplant or natural? Is it natural or transplant? A hair restoration procedure is an artwork but it should not be as identifiable as such. If someone can tell that a procedure is a hair transplant, in my opinion, it's a failure. It should be, our hands should be removed and it should look as natural as nature itself. The hairline design, the goal should be natural and undetectable and we should employ sound hair restoration principles to accomplish our goal. It needs to function not only today, but long term, 10, 20, 30 years down the road. The donor is the area that provides the, the uh, raw ingredient of the paint that we use, which is the follicles. So we want to evaluate the donor for density. The density is the number of follicles per, per given area or the number of follicles per centimeter square. We want to also determine the tissue elasticity, uh, which determines how wide a strip we can take uh, in an FUT procedure, and the hair characteristics, which determine how effective this given donor tissue is gonna be in, in our painting. For example, coarser hair is like painting with a with a big brush and, and finer hair is like painting with a, a single or, or a two hair brush. It's very detailed, uh, but it covers little area with a stroke, it's just a line. And the donor demand ratio, which is how much donor is available 
to how much area we need to cover. These ratios, unfortunately, are usually inversely related. It's always the patient with minimal hair loss that has the most donor available. And the patient with the most severe case of hair loss, the most advanced uh, Norwood stages, that have the least donor available. So he who needs the most has the least, and he who needs the least has the most. So how do we come about to decide where we should place our hairline. Number one, uh, the da Vinci rule or, or the rule of thirds. Leonardo da Vinci, the Renaissance man that he was, was uh, uh, one of the first hair restoration surgeons in that he determined that the distance between the chin or the menton and the base of the nose is equal to the distance between the base of the nose and the eyebrows and then the eyebrows and the hairline. So proper vertical spacing uh, could be uh, a third, a third, a third. There's another principle known as the shingling point, uh, which is a term coined by the late uh, Dr. Arturo Camarena, who uh, stated that it's the point where the scalp goes from a horizontal to a vertical. So it's, it's the inflection point uh, where it starts uh, moving down the forehead. There's another rule that says that the uh, hairline should be placed eight centimeters above the eyebrow. In actuality, it can be a range between eight and 11 centimeters above the eyebrow, depending on, again, the donor evaluation. In a severe patient with limited donor or thin donor, you may have to be a little more conservative than eight centimeters to be able to, to uh, make it work. The line equation is yet another principle. Uh, that is that two points determine a line. There's a point at the tip of the earlobe uh, and a point at the temporal peak. If you connect those two points, it, it extends to where the hairline should be. Alternatively, if a patient has an advanced stage of hair loss, uh, you can determine where that point is in the mid frontal point and then use that point in the earlobe to, to draw a line that connects the two and determine the inferior border of the temporal peak. The temporal peak is another part of the hairline uh, that frames the face on the side. And a hairline has to be balanced by temporal peaks. Otherwise, it's top heavy and it does not look natural and uh, will look like a toupee, uh, which a lot of hair on top, nothing on the sides. There's another principle that could be employed. Uh, there's an angle created by the intersection of the plane that courses through the top of the scalp and an angle that's created by the plane that goes through the forehead they intersect to form an angle. If you bisect that angle, it, it falls exactly at that inflection point, the shingling point, or the mid-frontal point. They're, they're all roads lead to Rome, and they all point to where the hairline should be. To summarize, hairline design uh, incorporates a comprehensive evaluation of a patient's condition, which determines their candidacy for the procedure, first of all, and foremost. Then it's followed by an evaluation of the donor, which assesses how much paint is available to create this uh, hair restoration procedure artwork. And then we follow sound hair restoration principles. It's not picked out of thin air. There are principles involved that determine where a hairline should be placed. It's the small things in hair that make a big difference. And if you follow those, then the, the hair artwork should not be visible as such. It should be as natural as nature itself.